Please close your eyes. Imagine a woman holding a baby in her arms. Form an image and try to embellish it with details of your own choice. Explore the options, create a narrative. The woman could be a mother and the child could be her child. Her hair might be long or short, ivory black in color, blonde, ginger or white. Her eyes blue, gray, green or brown. Her skin smooth and soft or rough, milky white in color or even darker. She may be standing with her baby in the dark or under the sun. She may be waiting on a queue in a bank or in a cafe. She may be led on a hospital bed or down on the cold floor holding her baby in a fetus position. She may be seated on a bench in a park, breastfeeding, or rocking the baby to sleep on a couch. And she may also travel sitting comfortably on a chair or in a boat in the middle of the night, in the middle of the sea. Now, imagine that the baby is you and the woman is your mother. Feel the warmth of her arms wrapped around your body. Feel the smell of her body entering through your nostrils and surrounding you sweetly. Feel her breath touching softly your skin. Her heart is beating close to your ear. Follow the rhythmic pulse of her breathing. For the next two minutes, I want you to focus on the image of yourself as a baby breathing in and breathing out. Observe yourself, sheltered and protected in your mother's arms. You now feel the gravity of the earth opposing the openness of the sky as it pulls you up. You are weightless. In stillness you are standing in between the earth and the sky, breathing. Keep your eyes closed. Go back to that memory. Recollect the primal experience of your first breath and the first memory of your mother's voice.
Open your eyes. I am an observer. When I'm on stage, on the street, or among the audience in a theatrical, a musical performance, or a dance performance, I observe people and people's impulsive reactions to sound. The very first memory that I hold of myself is that of a girl deeply and constantly overwhelmed and fascinated by two things, words and music. Words and music attracted my interest from start for their performative quality and their capacity to create meaning. As I was growing older, I reached a point where I found myself bewitched and bewildered by the multiple ways in which words and music and their combination never cease to create meaning in connection to the emotion. It was then when I started singing, singing and researching, and I never stopped. In my head, there is always a song that goes on, and I'm always singing. As a vocal performer myself and a vocal coach, I'm constantly on search of new modes to engage my audience directly and effectively with my performance. I follow a narrative. I try to deliberate its idea, create a contact with my audience, a dialogue, and keep this dialogue constantly open for further interpretation, for further exploration. I do so because I believe that as much important, profound, and meaningful as a music work can be, any music work, it is on the commitment, the reaction, and the engagement of the audience that the importance of a performance lies on, can educate us, and reveals itself. But what is a performance? A performance in material and immaterial arts, like music is, is a constructed situation, like the one we now experience. It's a situation that works both mentally and physically, in a specific time, in a specific place, in front of an audience. The performance never, ever substitutes life. But what it can do, effectively, is change the way we shape our opinion, the way we make our decision, and the way we enact on things. Sound can affect us in four basic ways. Physiologically, psychologically, in cognition, in our behavior. More effectively than in other performing arts, music empowers us through the axis of recognition and association. Following our experiences from childhood to adulthood and also our cultural background, folk songs, the experience of folk songs, the experience of singing folk songs, the experience of listening to folk songs, songs that have been performed over and over again from generation to generation, that experience affects us in multiple ways. And also, it triggers to at utmost one of the most basic characteristics of the human being, the need of belonging. In 2012, still a postgraduate student in early music singing performance at the University of York in the United Kingdom, I was appointed to work with the Brunswick Nursery Center which was a charity organization that offers work and training to people with learning disabilities and special skills. My job then was to design and conduct a program focusing on the use of songs and the way in which the singing performance can affect the memory and also improve the breath control, the muscle control, and the language control of the people diagnosed with autism. The material of the course was mostly borrowed from songs that have been already familiar with the participants, including some of the best hits of ABBA, like the song Knowing Me, Knowing You, which was the song that where from the whole program has been entitled. Almost a year later, as we were reaching the end of the program, a miracle happened. The participants asked me to finish my singing sessions with a song from my homeland, Greece. Since that was my last year in York, and I was just about to go back home, they would like me to sing a song of my homeland to them, so for them to remember me, they said that, and they insisted. And I was lost and confused. To put it simply, I had no idea where to begin with and how to explore and imprint in the participants' mind, all native English speakers, a Greek text. 
How could I guide them to relate and remember? And how could they possibly associate with a different cultural background and most of all positively be affected in terms of language and in terms of memory? Against the main purpose of my goals, my objectives and my methodology, the Greek language at this point seemed to create the huge barrier and could create also a chaos for that particular group of people. But I had to try. So I chose a Greek song, a Greek folk song, that was mostly related to the sea. And so, stereotypically, I try to transmit images and sound and create a connection. The song didn't really work for the most of them, for the vast majority of my group. The most of them were really struggling with the Greek language, and what we ended up doing was rather uh, a listening session and not a singing session, during which I was singing and they were listening. A month later, my job was finally finished and I had to go. One of the part participants asked to meet me in person to say a proper goodbye. Jack is a pianist who has been diagnosed with Asperger syndrome since his early childhood. I remember that he barely sang a single note and he barely uttered a single word during all the time we spent together, but he insisted on coming again and again during the year of the program because he found it very comforting, very interesting to accompany us for some bits during the workshop playing the piano. Uh, almost every day with the assistantship of his mother, Jack plays the carillon at the Cathedral of York, the cathedral that is mostly known as the York Minster, and it stands as the largest of its kind in Northern Europe. The carillon of York Minster is a musical instrument composed of 35 bells, typically housed in the highest of the church's towers. Following the ritual, at a specific time every day, Jack plays the carillon, arranged tunes related to the church liturgy, mostly hymns and anthems. The carillon sounds all around the city of York. And the moment that the melody starts is the moment in which all the people that are in the church, out of the church, standing on a bench in the square, at the park that surrounds the church, and also all the small islands and the street around York, people stop and listen. That day, I remember that I arrived early and I stood in front of the church at a square on a bench as Jack suggested me to. The plan was for me to wait and he was coming to say goodbye. I remember that day, the sun, and I remember how noisy and busy the place was. You could see all people passing by and making noise, tourists, students, all sorts of people. It was amazing, really noisy and lively. And then, the carillon started, and the people stopped, and they listened. And I stood, all of myself, alone, listening, holding my breath, wrapped in a feeling of awe and deep gratitude, unsuccessfully trying to hold my tears. It was my Greek folk song that Jack arranged that day, and that was his special goodbye to me. I returned back to Greece, and joining forces with a pianist I was working back then, Irene Govatu, I started researching, studying, documenting, arranging, listening, and singing, 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 singing folk songs. Together we created a project that was later called The Ethnography of Lullabies. And it was a musical performance uh, focused mainly on the selection of lullabies from all over the world. In 2013, we collaborated here in Alexandropolis with uh, the Ethnological Museum of Thrace and a choreographer. We expand this idea, and the result was an almost theatrical performance that comments and documents on the lullabies. Performances have already been given around Greece, Turkey, Hungary, and we're still going on. The impact and the reactions we get from all these different audiences is almost every time breathtaking. We have experienced that language matters. Language matters to our understanding, creates a barrier.
but not to the extent that we cannot really make an impact and connection with the music. And there are several reasons why people coming from different places all around the world are inspiring and connecting during a performance of folk songs. Folk songs embrace matters bigger than ourselves, and sometimes bigger than life. In character, in context, and in sound, they connect us with the basic feelings we all have, the feelings that define us as human beings, anger, fear, sorrow, joy, love, or desire. In their world, there is a full capacity of love for the human and respect and understanding for the other. In the world of the folk songs, you can find yourself and you can find the others. No matter the language, no matter the singing voice, the timbre of singing voice, the quality, the musical arrangement, the tempo, what folk songs mostly do to us is that they create a richer vocabulary that we can ever, ever create in any other form of knowledge and experience we may acquire. And the richer the vocabulary becomes, the bigger the volume as human beings grows and the deeper our understanding for something else, something different from us gets to be. Folk songs made me ask simple questions, the type of questions that we all ask, no matter the time, the place, hair color, race, origin, language, orientation in life. What do I fear? Why do I fear? What do I long for? What do I love? Where my security, my sense of security lies on? What do I need to be happy? There is a physical place in which we all understand our existence and we feel free. In his book, The Word, Jean Paul Sartre claims that this place is called our childhood. Before even our feelings, our cognition is formulated, we have all experienced the same two things, the experience of breath 
and the experience of the human voice, there is where the feeling of home lies on us. For T.S. Eliot, home is where one starts from. And as we grow older, the world around us becomes stranger, and the most scattered our relationships start to be. But we must keep on, we must keep on moving forward, trying to get a deeper understanding of ourselves, the world that surrounds us, and also the other human being around us, next to us, the one that opposing us. And that is what the folk songs do to us, both for the performance and the audience, the experience is one, united and common. And this is the reason why folk songs never die. So my suggestion, sing for your soul. This is such a vague and almost elusive overstatement, one may say, and it is. But it is actually totally, deeply true. So my suggestion, sing. Sing for you for yourself, your mind, your heart, your body, and also for the other. Tragudiste. This is my idea, and it is an idea worth spreading. Thank you very much.